Hello everyone, today's video I'll be reviewing Creed 3, the third of the Rocky spin-off series. A few weeks ago I saw the third Creed movie in the theaters with my dad. It was awesome. I loved it. This is a series that keeps getting better and better for me, even as I get older. It amazes me how I still love the movie despite Rocky was not in it. At the same time, this movie's not perfect. In this movie we see how Adonis Creed retires, he works as a boxing promoter, adjusting to his retirement family life, which I liked. Showing a different side from Adonis from the last two movies. His childhood friend Damien just got out of prison and wants to be a champion fighter. As much as Adonis wants to give him a shot, his friend Damien does not understand there are certain rules in fight promotions. Michael B. George is once again great as Adonis Creed. He is getting better and he's going to be around for a very long time. He knocks out of the park in this movie. This is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. Not only does he act, this guy can direct. I look forward to seeing what else he's going to do as a director. Sometimes I wanted Michael B. Jordan to take lessons and learn from Ryan Coogler when he directed the first Creed movie. Adonis has established himself and found his niche in life and has found his own identity not being compared to his father like in the last two movies. We see how despite his positive role model image in this movie, but like anyone else, he has his flaws and he is not perfect. Jonathan Majors as Damien does a good job in this movie. I'll admit, I had no idea who Jonathan Major was until this movie. He was in the new Ant-Man movie, which I have not seen yet. Damien is a former childhood friend of Adonis who spent time in jail. When he gets out, we see how he wants to be a champion and turn his life around after being in prison for a long time. And he is jealous of Adonis' success. He wants a taste of success. When we were first introduced to Damien, he seemed like an okay, nice guy, but wanted to reveal what he did to the Russian boxer breaking his hand was planned, so that way he could fight. You want Adonis to beat this guy up. Tessa Thompson once again does a good job as Bianca. We see how because of her hearing loss, she's not singing anymore. Instead, she seems to be some kind of, like, music agent consultant, hosting parties and other events. She's not enthusiastic about her daughter wanting to learn how to fight from her dad, but she has a good reason for that. As always, I love her chemistry she has with Michael B. Jordan. Bianca wants to make sure her daughter learns an important lesson in life that fighting and violence is not a good thing and that fighting is only for self-defense. I'm not a parent, but I understand that she wants her daughter to grow up to have a regular childhood. Bianca also wants to make sure her hearing problem does not affect her life and that she can do anything to overcome the hearing loss obstacles. And of course, most importantly, Make sure her daughter turns out alright and does not end up in the wrong crowd. As I mentioned earlier, even with no Rocky in this movie, I was still amazed how much I enjoyed this movie without Rocky in the movie. They do mention his name a few times, which I'm glad, but at the same time it made me wonder, where is Rocky? Adonis does not say or explain where Rocky is or what he's doing, or why is he not available. Was Rocky spending time with his son and grandson? Because in Creed 2, the last time we see Rocky, he was visiting his son and grandson. After Creed's champion loses to Damien, I kept expecting Rocky to show up and train Adonis, but at the same time, I kept reminding myself, Rocky is not in this movie. Heck, I was expecting at least a small cameo from Rocky in this movie. I was expecting to think that Rocky could have been sitting in the stands watching Adonis, or watching the fight at home in his family room. Or maybe Adonis calls Rocky, asking him, did you see me win the fight? And he explains to Rocky the story of what happened. There's no explanation of Rocky's absence in this movie, which is something I would have liked to have seen mentioned. I hope in the next Creed movie, Rocky comes back, and there's an explanation for his absence in this movie. This movie shows how Adonis is still going on with his life, and being strong without Rocky's help. And he needs to be his own person, and figuring things out on his own. Rocky will not always be around to help Adonis forever. Out of all the movie franchises in recent years of passing the torch, this is the best one. In the old Rocky movies, it's about Rocky going the distance, doing his best, overcoming the obstacles. In the Creed movies, the torch is passed down to Adonis. Adonis wanted to follow in his father's footsteps, but be his own person, not being compared to his father. As time goes on, Adonis will figure out bigger challenges and obstacles when he gets older in the later movies. It was very interesting how the movie begins at Adonis' past, how his friend got arrested. Then it cuts to Adonis' last fight to present day. It takes place in between 2020 through 2023. I guess this is a fictional universe where COVID did not happen. 
No one is wearing masks with no social distancing, I guess. Despite I got into some spoilers so far in this movie review, stop the video right here. This is where I really get into bigger spoilers right here in the movie review that are so important for the film. The part where Donna's mother dies, I wonder if this was supposedly going to be Rocky, before this movie turned out to be, and before Sylvester Stallone decided not to come back as Rocky in this movie, I kept wondering, are they going to go in the direction of killing off Rocky like how Mickey had dying in uh, Rocky 3? The death of Adonis' stepmom was sad. Here was a woman who raised Adonis as her own, despite she was not Adonis' real mother. She also wanted to make sure he did not end up in the wrong direction and people in life. Most of all, she wanted to protect Adonis and make sure nothing bad happened to him, but that's every mother in general. Adonis finding out that his stepmom hid the letters from Damien who wrote to him in prison, but she had a good reason for that, thinking that he was a bad influence on Adonis. It was also very sad because before she died, that was one of his last interactions that he had with his uh, stepmom before she had another stroke and died. It's true they say that life is too short, enjoy every moment with your loved ones, no matter what, and that parents are not perfect. Before I move on, one thing I've always wondered and curious about is, with Adonis' stepmother passing away, where are Apollo Creed's kids from Rocky II? How come we did not see them at the funeral? Also, what is the relationship Adonis has with his step-siblings? I hope that can be explained in a future Creed sequel. Two years ago, when I reviewed all the Rocky movies on my YouTube channel, I mentioned that when they announced the third Creed movie to the series, it was rumor announced that Adonis Creed was going to fight Mr. T's son, which could have been interesting and cool, but then you're repeating Creed 2 where he fights Avon Drago's son as revenge, redemption, paying for the sins of the father, which does make sense. Instead, I'm glad in this movie Adonis fights an old friend who's battling and fighting his demons when he was locked up for years in prison for being hungry, wanting to be on the same success level as Adonis. Damon is also trying to turn his life around after getting out of prison, but he takes things too far, and Damon does not go by the rules. When I saw this, I did not see the twist coming that Damon planned to have the Russian boxer's hand get broken at a party, so that way, he can fight the Mexican boxer. The movie has themes on how we are all trying to run away from our past, and yet the past can come back to haunt us. The only way Donis can overcome this is by facing it, and that he can't run away from Damien. I like the conversation Adonis had with Bianca after his stepmom's funeral, telling her the truth of what happened with Damien and getting arrested for pointing a gun at this guy who beat Adonis up. Adonis hit a guy who abused him at some group home, which I can't blame Adonis for doing that. For what he said about the guy, he was a piece of shit and got what he deserved for getting punched in the face. Adonis feels guilty for running away and leaving Damien behind, getting arrested, and he did not visit him in prison. He wished he could have done more and save his life, where Adonis has to realize that he's only human and that he can't save everyone. Adonis Trainer Duke is the son of Duke Apollo's trainer from the previous Rocky movies. Duke tells him his weaknesses and his injury history, that he can't change that, but they can work around his weaknesses and make them as strong as. It shows I have no excuses. Anything is possible. Even when you have a history of injuries and concussions from a sport, it can be done and modified. Watching that scene made me think how being a gym rat, workout enthusiasm that I am makes me think how as a personal trainer, I've learned how to help give people advice on working around injuries, modify exercises depending on their like injury history. Also, how just because you're hurt, you can still train, just do what you can, let your injury heal until you're ready to go back to like whatever it is that activity was. It seems like Adonis and Ivan Drago's son have made peace and seem to be friends despite... Avon Drago killed Adonis' father. The part when Adonis is training, Adonis spars with Victor to train him. At first, Adonis is feeling weak, then he gets back on up to fight Victor back. One way I see this, Victor wanted to motivate him, remind Adonis, how badly do you want this to win to beat Damien? In all the years I've watched Rocky and Creed movies, it was very interesting and different to see when they fight, the audience is gone. It shows how the audience does not matter to them. The fight is between them. The audience does not exist. Some people seem to complain about the cage. Maybe one way I looked at it is that Damien did time, and Adonis does not know what it's like to be in jail and do time. I'm not sure you would agree with me on that one, but that's one way I saw how I got out of it. I don't know. Also, it shows that when the crowd disappears, Adonis and Damien are animated, have tunnel vision, 
and they are not paying attention to the crowd at all whatsoever. Amara created Adonis and Bianca's daughter is cute, adorable, but she does have a tough side, especially how she is treated in school because of being deaf. She just wants to be treated like everyone else. That is understanding, but at the same time, she must learn violence is not the answer. Seeing her communicate through sign language makes me want to learn how to use sign language. It surprised me how despite how her family has mixed feelings and are learning to box, they bring her to the boxing matches events. I'm not sure in real life that little kids are even allowed to go to boxing events or matches because of how brutal and violent they can be. Seeing her learn some fighting skills from her father Don and his, this makes me think if this will foreshadow when she grows up, maybe she might want to follow her father's footsteps and be a fighter, but her mom and maybe Don is, might not like this idea. They might worry because of her hearing problem. Will this have a negative impact on her if she does become a boxer? I look forward to seeing this idea and concept in the future Creed sequels. I thought it was cute when in her first scene she wakes up her dad playing Princess Tea Parties. It reminds me when I played Disney Princess Tea Parties with my little niece. Yes, I played Disney Princess Tea Parties with my niece and proud of it because I'm a good uncle to her. The only difference is I don't go that far wearing a costume like Adonis does. <laughs> I just play with the princess dolls for her. Ever since I was a teenager, I've watched Rocky movies growing up. This is the first Rocky movie to not take place in Philadelphia, which felt very strange to me. This movie takes place in Los Angeles, California. Philadelphia was Rocky's home. Adonis Creed has his own home place. Seeing him run up the Hollywood side was definitely his version of the Rocky Steps by the Philadelphia Museum. It also made me think Rocky IV when he climbs the mountains of Russia and shouts out, Drago! All in all, with no Rocky in this movie, it was still a fun movie. I had a blast, and it got me pumped up, motivated, excited to see Donna's once again go the distance. I highly recommend this movie. You won't be disappointed. So that was my review of Create 3. Like the video, subscribe, hit that bell button to get the latest updates on my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time.